Getting around on the graphing calculator. The calculator can be turned on by pressing the on key. And after you're done using the calculator, you can save batteries by pressing second, then the on key again. Otherwise, it'll turn off automatically after three minutes. What if you turn on your calculator and see nothing in the view screen? Does that mean that it needs new batteries? Well, turn the calculator over. Make sure that you have the four batteries there. It just might look like it's off because the contrast is turned low. You can up the contrast by pressing second, then the up arrow key, and do that repeatedly until you see the blinking cursor in the upper left-hand corner. You can lower the contrast by doing the opposite, pressing second, then the down arrow key. And this would be an example of normal or high contrast. And this is what low contrast looks like. You can up it again by pressing second and the up arrow key and doing that over and over again. And uh, you can clear usually by pressing the clear key from home screen. Or if you have a graph in place, you, you can clear by pressing second. And then after you do that, press the mode key, which gets you the quit. Just about every key on the calculator you can do three different things. Here's the exponent key which is below the clear key on the right side of the keypad and you can access it by pressing you can evaluate 8 to the power of 6 by pressing 8 exponent key 6 and we can evaluate that we can now enter the pi key by pressing second and then the key itself which gives you 3.14159 which is the uh, rational number discovered by the Greeks many years ago now you can finally use the text by entering the alpha key and then the key itself, which gives you the H. And if you enter that again, you can see that the value 0 is stored for H. And we can change that value to another one, but that's another lesson another time. If we go to Y equals, it's here we can enter up to 10 functions. And you don't see below Y8, Y9, and Y10. If you scroll down, they can be available there. We're going to enter Y1 equal the linear parent function X. And we enter that, and we see the line here. We can, from here, just use our free cursor and go wherever we want to on the whole view screen, not even the line. If we press the trace key, shown here next to the graph key, we can move left or right on this function with the left and right keys to go wherever we want and evaluate. If we go back to y equals, we can enter in y2 a second function. In this case, I entered x squared minus 3. And I used, in this case, the minus sign. And this is not to be confused with the negative sign. Here I've entered the negative sign below in Y3, and it's a shorter symbol, and it's, a, it's higher placed than the minus sign. It's a crucial difference. And we can graph these two equations simultaneously, and we see them both here. If we press the trace key, we can see that, in this case, Y1 equals X is being accessed by the trace function. We move left or right. If we press the up arrow key, it will get us over to the second function. And from here, we can move the uh, left or right arrows and go where we want to on the second function. And if we, here we see it highlight, if we press the down arrow key again, it takes us back to y1 equals x. And so we can use the up and down arrows to change between functions. And, and once we get on those functions, we can use the left or right arrows. Here we're back to y equals. And we have a blinking cursor above x and x squared. I'm going to show you a neat feature. You press second and then delete key, which gives you the insert mode, that blinking on and off x. And I'm deciding at this point to enter the negative sign. And what that does, it puts a negative in front of that x squared. So we don't have to retype everything. And we graph it. And we see y equals x squared and y equals negative x squared minus 3. And we go back to y equals. And we have our two symbols, these highlight equal signs mean that these equations are active. We can deactivate one of those equal signs by taking the cursor over it and pressing enter. In this case, it's deactivated. And we can graph it. We only see y equals negative x squared minus 3. We can go to second graph, and we can evaluate in the table view this function. We can scroll up or down to any hole we want to. In this case, I have scrolled all the way up to negative 22. We can go back to y equals and reactivate y1 equals x. And we can go to second graph and table view, and we can evaluate two functions simultaneously. In this case, for an input value of x equals negative 21, y1 equals negative 21, and y2 equals negative 444. 
We can go back to y equals and enter a function that might represent John's earnings if he earns $11 per hour. y equals 11x. If we graph it, it looks like this. We don't have a real good view of it. We can change our view by going to the window. In this case, here are some settings that I entered that will help us to use that function better. If we graph from here, we see a nice classical diagonal going from left to right in the whole view screen. So you'll get familiar with how to do this. We can go back to standard window by pressing zoom 6. Remember that zoom 6 will help you get straight in a lot of situations. Zoom standard. Now from here, a lot of different things. We can change our decimal point by going over here to 2, float to 2, and if we enter pi, we get rounded off instead of 3.14159, we get 3.14. This is a place that if you use a calculator in public school and you share it with others, it can be a sabotage target. So look for here if things are messed up in your calculator. Another place you can go in your calculator is second, zoom, it gets you to your format view. And these are all things that are related to how your, your graph appears, axes on and off, grid on, it's a very important thing. Again, this is a sabotage target. Now there's a neat little feature in your calculator called ANS or answer and the last thing that you calculate in this case pi times 30 divided by 360 it's stored as 0.26 and you can access it by pressing second then the minus key so this is very helpful multi-step problems and you can also if you there's another feature if you type in, in this case I was trying to calculate the volume of sphere 4 thirds pi r cubed well, in this case, I made a mistake. I used 5 thirds instead of 4 thirds, and I can fix it by pressing 2nd, then the Enter key, and I can just scroll back to over the 5 and put a 4 instead, and press Enter. And that's so I didn't have to retype everything. So that was a very useful feature. Let's say that things have been change in your calculator so much you just don't know where you are. What do you do? Well you can change to your basic original settings by going from second and then the mem key which is accessed by the plus key and from there you can go down to reset and you can have different options here. I often will just go ahead and reset for defaults just to get to normal calculator settings. So we've gone over very quickly a lot of things your calculator can do. Stick with it. Learn a lot. Look at the other lessons. Don't be discouraged. You'll be able to make it.